At Trex, we know there's a place for wood in your backyard. We recommend the fire pit. But when it comes down to choosing the right material for your next deck, look no further than the superior beauty and durability of the world's number one premium decking brand. Trex delivers the look of wood without all of the work and the worry, and it's made from 95% recycled materials, which makes it the right choice for your backyard 100% of the time. To learn how to make Trex your next deck, visit trex.com to order samples. Well, we're trying to get you going on a Wednesday morning. Glad you're with us. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. Mike Golick, Mike Golick Jr., Trey Wingo here. First and foremost, for those of you that lived in the Northeast, I'm glad everybody, yes. hopefully everybody was okay. We had some wicked storms yeah. come through yesterday. Yeah, where we both live, Trey yeah. and I, you in the same city, Mike next to us, we didn't... We got a lot of rain. We didn't right. get some of the damage, like our, our good friend Rebecca Lobo. Oh my gosh, she pulled through that man, some of that, like golf ball size hail. Huge coming hail, down. and I saw a couple of trees on houses and trees on power lines in some of the other cities. It was bad. So hopefully everybody uh, is safe and sound. Mike, I know Allie, who's on our show, working social show media and, and the producer for your show. Allie was in the basement with no power and and and, and emailing out show notes. We send the send the email note out yeah. every night with the list of topics and stories and articles that we might get to during the course of the show. And Allie sent with it attached to her note said, I'm sending this out early as I sit in my basement on my phone with no power in the dark. Yeah. It was one of the sad pre-show yeah. notes I had ever seen. Allie, standing O, show yeah. eraser, getting things done. Good job out of you. Uh, so we got a lot to get to. We've got uh, the second game of the Western Conference Finals tonight. Mm-hmm. We will have a deep, 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 deep dive into what went on between the Celtics and the Cavaliers wow. last night. Yeah. Plus, we will answer the burning question. The burning question of the day. Yanni or Laurel? That is the burning question. It is unreal, the things that take over social media. That are completely and utterly meaningless. And useless. It's the best version of social media. I it would is. rather have that than the social media divided on political Agreed. or racial or social Agreed. lines. I want the social media that's tearing each other apart over something that we will forget about probably in so a matter true. of days. This is yeah. basically the audio version of, what was it, the blue and what color? Blue, blue or gold. Blue or gold dress that went on, yeah. of which I saw blue and only blue Me the too. entire time. I yeah. saw blue. So, but, but this is the audio version that we'll get to as well because it is setting social media on fire well as i've always said about twitter outrage twitter outrage is hilarious because they get so angry until they see something else the next day that makes them more angry they forgot about what they were angry that's exactly right so that that's what it is yeah we'll get into all of that uh again we got some great guests coming up and we're gonna play bretomology yes we are we're gonna play bretomology a little bit later on today because it's been 24 hours since brett took over the show so he's exactly right looking forward to reclaiming his rightful role holy smokes does he want to get back on yes he does uh we've got amin el hassan coming up a little Mm -hmm. later on jackie mcmullen our fine nba analyst will join us as well plus we'll have our news teammate a little bit later, John Fox. Yes, we will. How about former that? head coach of the Foxy. Carolina Panthers, mm-hmm. Denver Broncos, and Chicago Bears, a uh, newest member of our NFL team, will join us a little bit later. But let's get starting with what's trending. And what's trending is the Celtics at home. They're good. The Celtics outscored the Cavs by 20 in the second half, and they now have a 2 nothing lead in the Eastern Conference Finals, despite a 40-point triple-double game from LeBron James. Yeah, he goes 42-10-12 and 12 in this one and came out of the gates just like we thought he would. 21 points in the first quarter. Nobody shocked at that at all. What was, Mike, was getting to halftime, they had that double-digit lead and it got down to 7. He started thinking, okay, and we'll talk about LeBron got stung, got, got hit in the jaw, and said it was the next strain. I think there's more than a few people think it was something different than that. But then, which we will get into. Yes, we will. But then the bottom line is how you come out in the third quarter and in that second half, Cleveland was absolutely garbage in the second quarter. Not only with their shots, but it seemed like with the second half, second Second, half, but with their hustle as well in closing out shots. We have all kind of numbers to, to, to go with that to show all the open shots and uncontested shots Boston had, but what a difference of of a team that was right in position to get a split on the road and just absolutely dropped it in the second half. It was embarrassing. Yeah. It was an embarrassing level of effort, and I usually don't reserve that level of vitriol here because people lob this kind yeah, of stuff at pro do. athletes right. all the time, say they're only in it for the money, they don't care about this, and We've been in enough locker rooms collectively to see how much guys usually care. Last night on the court, you could visually see a lot of guys that seemed apathetic, that seemed lethargic, and it was honestly embarrassing to watch. L- let me put it this way. In watching a little bit of that second half, I was reminded of myself over the weekend Saturday 
uh, playing in our member member tournament when it was 38 degrees and raining. Not a lot of want to out of me. Saturday didn't want to morning. be there, huh? Not a lot of want to out of me Saturday morning, and it certainly didn't seem like there was a lot of. I think the Cavs know who they are, and they know who the Celtics are, and I think that sometimes that realization can slap you across the face like a fish, and suddenly <laughs> you're like, "Well, damn it." Uh, and it certainly seemed like that was sort of the way the way it sort of went for the Cavs in the second half. We'll get into more of that as we continue. But as we go on with what's trending, the Rockets hope to avoid what just happened to the Celtics, although or to the Cavs. But it would be much worse because if they go down two nothing, they would lose the first two games of the Western Conference Finals at home. That's exactly right. And Trey, you can get it ready because I am going to use a second spectrum stat. Yeah, let's yeah, go. go. I'm go ready. On. Do it. Do it. <laughs> And you wonder if this will change, because going into this, we knew what it was about. We knew what Houston did. They were an isolation team, and certainly Golden State moves the ball around incredibly well. But, I mean, almost overboard. In that first game, the Knicks had 45 isolations, which was more than double the average of the regular season. And James Harden had 26 isolations, the most he's had in any game this season. So you really wonder, thank you very much, if... That does have to change some. I mean, okay, we know you're that kind of team, but did you go a little overboard with that? And does that need to change in game two? You can understand maybe where that comes from because James Harden's a guy that we talk about. The narrative around him is that he has a lot to prove in this big stage, that he's got to go out there and show that the disappearing act we saw last year was not who he is at his core, but that seemed to come at the expense of a better version of this team. They've got to hope for that. I don't believe that's coming. We've seen now what Golden State looks like when they're locked in and care. Kevin Durant and uh, Steph Curry, when they've been on the team together, have lost two collective right. playoff games yeah. now. I think that trend's going to continue. This series, I think, could be a sweep. Very, I think it's more likely we see a sweep in the Western Conference than the Eastern Conference. Isn't that amazing? Which, which is ridiculous amazing. if you think about how well the Rockets have and played And we've been this waiting year. for this yeah. matchup saying this is the finals, and our finals looks like we're going to get, I think, what a lot of people think a, a pretty – could be a decent one the way Boston is playing right now. We'll have to wait and see. And again, you just sort of glossed over that, but I, I think that can't be overstated. Uh, we have to expect now that the Rockets are going to win four of the next six games against the Warriors, and they have lost two postseason games with those two guys yeah. playing together. 18-2. and two. Again, let me just say. It's bad math for you if you're a Houston yeah. Rocket fan. Good yeah. luck. And that's not even a second spectrum stat. That's just like first spectrum math. More than anything else. <laughs> Speaking of the NBA, barring a trade, the Phoenix Suns will be have the first pick in the NBA draft for the first time in franchise history. They did so by becoming the fourth straight team to win the lottery, the NBA draft lottery, entering with the best odds. How about they got it? So it's happened yet again, but it was the Kings who were the real winners last night. They yep. landed the number two pick after entering the lottery with just a 5.3% chance of doing that. Yeah. So they end up with the number two pick and... Uh, so, I I mean, really, the draft, the lower part of it certainly kind of went the way we were supposed to go. And a lot of people are going to point right to the Cavaliers picking a number eight. Wait a minute, you traded Kyrie Irving, got, it worked through all these these trades after you got made that trade, and you got that Brooklyn pick, and it was number eight. And you had Kyrie on the hook for two more years. Talk, you were going to be some re- revisionist history going on right now. Yep, no, as we continue to grade out that trade, the grades seem to get lower and lower and lower despite more homework getting turned in. And we heard Jay Billis and plenty of our analysts last night, Woj, up there talking about the depth of this draft, but sitting down there at eight for what you gave up doesn't feel like you're going to get the return, especially when you think they might have to compensate for the loss of their best player in franchise history. That would be LeBron James, who suddenly, I wonder if that cold fish slapped him across the face and well when he realized, okay, this is the way it's going to be going forward. So how odd was it, though, with the last three teams standing last night? It was Sacramento, it was uh, Phoenix, and it was Atlanta. Yeah. And for Sacramento, it was De'Aaron Fox. And yep. for Atlanta, or, or for Phoenix, it was Josh Jackson. And for Atlanta... Jamie Gertz! Jamie Gertz! The, the actress, actress Jamie Gertz! How wild was that? Yeah, one of these <laughs> things is not yeah. like the other in that setting. Yeah, I, I, I was flicking on him like, is that who I think it is? <laughs> is that is that Jamie Gertz from all those classic eighties movies yes, with yes, Kevin Bacon? Yep, like, maybe she yes, can maybe is. she can hoop. Uh, who knows? Maybe she can hoop. Maybe uh, she's got game. I'm not willing I was to rule like, that. Then out. I had to Google. I'm like, okay, I understand why she's there. Married to one of the owners of the uh, of the of the, uh, of the Hawks, Atlanta Hawks. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, I guess it makes sense. I'm like, I was trying to put this together. In what scenario, if she wasn't married to the owner of the, of the Hawks, would she be there? What was the, what would be the possible impetus? 
And then I was like, she has to be married to somebody. Yeah, I go, go, yeah. I got it now. She's a great pick it. and roll player, too. But by the way, in case we didn't mention it, Suns 1, Sacramento 2, Hawks 3, Memphis 4, Dallas 5, Orlando 6, Chicago 7, uh, Cleveland 8, Knicks 9, and the 76ers via the Lakers 10. Yeah, and I think the big losers there are both the Knicks yeah. and Cleveland. I Although, in the latest mock draft, the first mock draft out there, because, you know, we, we're going to have That's what we do. We'll have a lot of these. Um, Michael Porter at yeah. eight. That's actually an interesting he selection. To Cleveland? Yeah. That's actually a very interesting selection. The more interesting thing will be is if he goes to Cleveland, is LeBron going to be in Cleveland? That may to be, be a teammate with Well, him. that's, that, that's the most important <laughs> yeah. uh, discussion. Um, the Knicks, by the way, you'd hope they would have some sort of chance, with, but they just. No. Nothing. No. They're not stuck happening. with number nine. All right, meanwhile, on the ice, the Lightning took game three from the Capitals and improved to four and one on the road this season, scoring two power play goals. To, uh, Tie the franchise record for consecutive playoff games, eight with at least one power play goal. Understand where these playoffs have gone, gang. Home teams are now 33 and 39 in the playoffs. Home ice. What? The only year in the post-1968 expansion era where home teams had a worse win percentage was 2012. They were 39 and 47. The the uh, away team has won every game in this series so far, so... Who knows where this thing is going? It is absolutely amazing. You get game three tonight, Jets in Vegas against the Golden Knights, but man, uh, home ice means nothing right now. Caps fans have to feel like every superstitious fan at a party where you leave the room and something good starts happening for your team, so you stay out of the yep, room right. in hopes that your good juju will pollute that environment, and then the minute you come back in, bad things start to happen again. That is the true definition of the life of a Capitals fan in the Alexander Ovechkin era. Now, they should have expected it, though. They're now 1-8 and there eight it is. all yeah. time in Game 3s when they're up 2-zip. So basically, they just kind of show up, but don't really show up. Right. And yeah. you, you think if it was any time that this was going to flip, this this postseason has felt a little different uh, for the Capitals, and they won the first two in Tampa Bay. Hey, guys, we're back on our ice. Let's slam the yep. door, go yep. up 3 nothing, and let's just make sure it happened, and then know we're our, we are who we are. We're 1-8, and eight, went up 2 nothing. Spin zone. They're in yeah. the Western co- the final, or the conference finals for the first time, the Eastern Conference finals. They want to make it feel more like home. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Nice try. Mm, uh, by the way, that 1-8 and eight record... Uh, when leading two nothing in a best of seven is the worst such record in yeah. NHL history, minimum of three games. And Caps fans everywhere are like, yeah, we know. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> well, it has been a rough week for the Mariners and second baseman Robinson Cano, who was placed on the DL with a broken hand on Monday before being suspended for 80 games on Tuesday for violating the Major League Baseball's joint drug agreement. Cano had played the most games in Major League Baseball since he entered the league in 2005. Has 305 home runs, second boast by a second baseman in Major League history behind only Jeff Kent, but he's going to be gone for a long time. 80 games is a rough stretch, but you clearly see, and this is one thing I think Major League Baseball does better than every other league, mainly really going up against the NFL. It's not like we see a ton of suspensions for these kind of violations handed out in the NBA, but they do it discreetly. Like the appeal for this happened before the season going on and then finally got laid out when it came to this, and Robinson Cano stands up, he takes his medicine, but he also makes it very yep. clear in this why he's doing it. Our own Pedro Gomez called him out yeah. pretty hard. We'll get more into this one. It, was a, it wasn't a PED, it was a diuretic, it was a masking agent. We'll explain it more. Bottom line, though, is on the DL, and he'll serve it while he's on the DL, and also, he's going to lose $12 million, basically. What? He makes $24 million <laughs> in 80 games, just right at around half, a 12 yeah. Mill going bye bye, never going into your pocket. I should say in the first fight that that is a tough road. That's and that. and he just dropped it, dropped it, and said let's let's start serving it. Let's as do Jerry, it. As Jerry Seinfeld once said, that's a big matzo ball. Yeah, there's a lot, there. lot more to get into with that one. We'll, we'll jump into and, and just real quickly so people understand. Yes, he tested positive for a masking agent, right? But the way it's set up, and Major League Baseball does a great job with this. If you test positive for a masking agent. Then they have to go back and prove right. that you use the masking agent to hide a PED, a performance enhancer. Right. So, so basically, yes, he got popped for a masking agent, but the way the process works, they went and showed him exactly why you did this to cover this up. So technically, he tested positive for a masking agent, but in the process that Major League Baseball used, 
He was really using people. Right, because he did appeal this. Yes, he was he going did. through the appeal, and then the league showed him, hey, we got this info on you, and he said, yeah, okay, damn no it. more, no and more the, appeal. And the way he's no. responded is trying to make sure that you don't read yeah. into that second part yeah. and that you only think about it all the was, nice things he says yes, about baseball. Was not PEDs, he's yes, saying. It, except in the fact, in this case, it absolutely was. All right, Golden Wingo presented by Progressive Insurance. Commercial insurance through Progressive protects your business and your dream. Choose from over 30 coverage options at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And if we're actually being progressive and forward-thinking, let's be clear about one thing. Through two games of the Eastern Conference Finals, this much is sure. The Celtics are younger, faster, stronger, and even a little bit tougher right now than this version of the Cleveland Cavaliers. And that's something that our analyst, Jeff Van Gundy, could easily spot after watching and dissecting Game 2. They've always been the better team. They're more talented. They're quicker, faster, more depth, uh, more range shooting uh, from more different people. So to me, they just have a a superior uh, talent base uh, after you get past James. And then they also have a superior toughness right now and a togetherness. Uh, that, That was an outstanding response to the onslaught that they faced to start the game from James. And real quickly, that onslaught was LeBron in the first quarter, scoring 21 of the team's 27 points. He was clearly in the zone, brought to you by AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. So he was in the zone for the first quarter. Right. But in the second half, the Celtics just said, enough, we're not losing this. Well, I mean, what we heard there, we all knew. Boston has the better team, all-around team, but it's always, well, they don't have LeBron. And LeBron was going to be trying to be in his eighth straight finals. You know, he's he's always going to be the team coming out of the East. Even if he didn't have a great team around him, he always found a way to win. So he always going to get the benefit of the doubt. And it does look like it's going to end this year because the help he's getting, even when it hasn't been great, he's found a way to pull them through, but it's just not going to happen. This this Boston team is just too many good players. Too many good play and young players and more athletic players. And, and I know you keep apologizing to Al Horford because he's playing well and you had him the last pick. Uh, of the of the All Star when they were you're a horrible yeah, which, person which yeah which he probably was yeah, but no, he has turned it on for the postseason he absolutely in a has great but way. but so saying Boston is better than Cleveland I, people are going to say well wait a minute but everybody's picking Cleveland yes we're doing it because of LeBron James and and we've done so and he's proven it every year that he's the team coming or he's going to lead the team coming out of the East but just not enough help here outside of Kevin Love who had 22 points 15 rebounds there's just nothing from anybody else. Of the four new players, one didn't play in Jordan Clarkson, and, the, and between the other three, there was five points. Five points. I mean, it's just not going to well, get it done. And the starting backcourt of George Hill and J.R. Smith combined for three points. Yep. Tristan Thompson, I'll give him some credit, especially to start the game, was a great catalyst for them. A lot of energy, going to work on the offensive glass, providing some spark when we've seen him inserted into the starting right. lineup. But it was a tale of two halves for this team who couldn't hit the broadside of a barn if LeBron James wasn't scoring or setting up the shot. Hey, look, it just goes down to depth, okay? LeBron got his. We all know. What did we say the over-under at, 38 yesterday? 35. 35. 35, yeah. He eclipsed that by seven. He got 42. He had a triple double. And hammer yes, the over. Uh, hammer the over. <laughs> He's learning, folks. Uh, Kevin Love got his at 22 points. But after that, you had to get a couple of threes from Kyle Corbett to have somebody else in double digits. Every single starter for the Boston Celtics had double digits. And Marcus Smart had double digits. So they had six players in double digits. I don't know if the Cleveland Cavaliers can win any game against the Celtics if they're going to get six players with double digits. Well, and and one of the reasons they do, we start now looking at, we're looking at effort, we're looking at hustle, we're looking at toughness. In the second half, the Celtics contested 92% of Cleveland shots. 92%. The Cavaliers contested just 58% of the Celtics shots, leaving them 20, 20 open looks. So you're not closing out on the shooter. They're getting open looks. I mean, what is that? I mean, if anybody on the team, including the coach, has to mention the word toughness or hustle, you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed at this point of what you're playing for that that term or word would even be used. But that's who the Cavaliers have been defensively all year. So I had to stop myself from getting that hot and bothered about that side of it because that's who they are. They're the basketball for dummies. We just got to score more points than them. They weren't able to score more points off shots 
in the first half, but they at least shot better, especially when LeBron was creating. The difference was, and we'll talk about the LeBron injury and the nature of how people received it, but the bottom line is he was different in the second half. And yeah. to start that fourth not quarter, he was not attacking, he was not creating, and when the Cavaliers' other guys were forced to try and create for themselves or create for that offense, they peed down their legs, and it yeah. was god-awful to watch. Yep. Yeah, there's two things we'll get into. We'll get into what really went on with LeBron and how it's perceived differently in this sport than yeah. perhaps in another sport. Uh, and what would have happened in that other said sport. And we'll get into the what you were talking about uh, with, with toughness because Ty Lue and others mentioned it and saw it. It was pretty easy. But just know this. History says this series is over. Mm-hmm. The, the Boston Celtics are 37-0 and in franchise history when they go up two games to none in a best-of-seven series. And, oh, by the way, they have yet to lose a game at home this postseason. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Decking, railing, lighting, furniture, fencing, framing. At Trex, we make the most in outdoor living because you deserve to get more from your life outdoors. So why not start bringing your ideas to life now with the brand that's engineering what's next? To learn more about all of the outdoor solutions Trex has to offer, or to find a local retailer or a certified Trex Pro deck builder near you, visit Trex.com. That's T-R-E-X dot com. Glad you're with us and hope you're still able to eat your breakfast. Go look at Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Let's get to some straight talk now, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. So in watching the first half of that game, I'm like, all right, this is exactly what I expected. Uh, the Cavs are going to come out. LeBron's going to be dominant. I think they're going to find a way to maybe squeak out this thing and go back tied at one. And then they played the second yep. half. Well, let me amend that. Then the Celtics played the second half. Uh, the second half being played by the Cavaliers, kind of debatable. And this is what Ty Lu said about the way things went down, the Cavs head coach, in the second half. we got to be tougher. You know, I think um, they're playing tougher than we are. Uh, we see that. They're being physical. Um, they're gooning the game up, and we got to do the same thing. So we got to be tougher mentally and physically. When your own coach oh. basically says we've got to be tougher mentally and physically, he's basically saying what? I, I, Try harder. I, let, let me tell you, as as any kind of professional athlete, I don't care the sport, when, you, when you're challenged on that, and when you when you're called out on that by your coach, I mean there are people that could sit out and analyze and say it, but when it's within your own locker room, and you know what, player, you know it. You know, you know when you're not closing out, you know when you're not hustling. And I know Cleveland's not known for great defensive scrappiness like that, but still there's the personal pride of taking care of your business on defense, which we talk a lot about with effort. And to see twenty uncontested shots, twenty wide open shots. It's it, uh, the word I use is embarrassing. Even though I, I, as I said, I know they're not known for it, but man, I mean that that is that is a tough look in the mirror, is what that is. Well, you see the difference in how it allows you to anchor because Boston wasn't shooting great in the first right? half, but they were getting good looks, and you said, all right, maybe they'll be able to turn this around in the second half. And how do they turn it around? They put the clamps on on defense. They said, all right, I can't control the shots not going in, but I can control theirs not going in right. if I try hard enough. And that's what the Cavaliers are never able to do. They can't turn defense into offense. They have to just thrive on offense. And so if the defense starts to go over to the offensive side for them, it's an overwhelming negative. And that's what you saw last night. The epitome of what the Cavs effort was, was that J.R. Smith push on Al Horford. Right. That was the Cavs defensive effort last night. It was lackluster. It was cheap. And it was Penny. It was flagrant, yeah. and then you know he gets in the pushing match, and there's a double technical. Was it smart, Marcus Smart? Yeah, and he got the got the technicals, but it was Jr. who got the flagrant on that. You're right, you're right about how he played that. And as I said, as a professional athlete or any athlete, to hear those words said about you within your own locker room, and as I said, when you look in the mirror, you know it. That's a that's a tough call. Well, listen, it was pretty obvious to everybody. What, what's interesting here is, Junior, you brought this up. What's been the problem with the Cavs all season? All during the regular season, it was their defense, right? I mean, they would score occasionally. They'd find ways to win. 
But their defensive problems have been there all season long. So do we think they're magically going to be fixed as we go forward by a little extra hustle in the game three? No, and it wasn't like they played stellar defense in the series against right. Toronto, but they did have more energy on that yes. end of the floor, and that came from the confidence of knowing they were better than that team. And to your point with all the fish slapping, there seems to be a lack of confidence with the reality that they understand they're not a better team, that they've got a really well-coached outfit on the other side, and that for the guys that aren't named LeBron James, when they're trying to initiate and all of a sudden Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum or Marcus Smart are putting that length and athleticism in front of them, it's frustrating these guys and it's forcing them into bad turnovers and bad shot selection and just overall cruddy offense. Yeah, when the other guys had to try and ignite something when it wasn't LeBron, it was a struggle. The, the right. spark in that second quarter was Kyle Korver. Ended up, and the stat came out. He goes in double digits. They don't lose. Right. He won double digits. They got lost. 11 points and he had him by halftime and didn't score in the second half and they lost. Yeah, they just can't create enough without LeBron being the creator. It, it was interesting though you, that Saturday Night Live skit we played that didn't air about the other Cavs and right. how they play hot potato offense, you know, like we play hot potato, LeBron passes the ball, we pass it right back. In watching Corver shoot some of those threes, I felt like he thought the ball was on fire. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen a guy catch the ball and shoot it faster than Corver a couple of those times. I mean, it was barely on his fingertips and it went down. It went a in. Couple he of, shot four of eight. It, it, mean, was, yeah. it was crazy how quickly he got that shot up and down, but you're right. They didn't have anything. And if you don't believe Ty Lu, you take a listen to Chauncey Billups, who was Mr. Big Shot in his career. He knows exactly what it takes to win a championship and he saw the exact same damn thing. Coach shouldn't have to try to ramp you up and make you compete harder and play harder. You can't control if shots are going down, but you can always control your effort, right? So it always read through the lines when I hear coaches say, we need to be tougher. We need to, you know, our mentality needs to be, you know, we need to hang our hat on a defensive end and, and impose our will. Like, that's something that's in you or it's not. I completely agree. You can break down X's and O's. Yep. You can break down fundamentals. You can break down footwork. You can break down switching. You can break down coming off screens. You can break down all of that stuff. But and, and players know it before anybody else. If you can't do some of that stuff, what you can do is you can hustle. You could dive. You could make a move. You could sprint to something. You could you can make up for it with effort. That's what a lot of defense can be with want to. And, man, when you don't get that, especially when you lack in the other parts of it, well, it shows just like last night. Yeah, that was just not fun to watch, especially after that Houston Rockets and Warriors first half where we're all like, this is basketball. Yeah, this yeah. is what it's supposed to look like. I watched the fourth quarter of that game where even the Celtics weren't playing great to start the fourth, and I was like, we have to watch this side-by-side, that triumph in the world of basketball, this dreck. It's horrible. It, yeah. it, it, listen, once you've been fish slapped, it's hard to come back. There you go. A lot of fish and slapping. Have you ever been slapped with a fish? Uh, well, it's a it's a video game that uh, my son played years ago. It was pretty funny. He got, he got slapped in the face with a fish. So we always. But have you ever been slapped in the face no, with a fish? No, but okay. I did see somebody actually pick up a, a dead fish in a river and throw it and hit somebody in the face. There you go. So that's right. like. So you've seen someone get it's slapped a sign in of the dis- face. It's the, the ultimate fish. sign of disrespect okay. when someone slaps you across the face well, with a fish. All right. And uh, we'll see if the uh, calves can. Get back from being fish slapped. And that is Straight Talk, by the way. <laughs> Brought to you by a Straight Talk Wireless nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Okay, now we get to the, the urbane, the silly, the ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it's the audio version of blue, gre- blue dress, gold dress, white dress, whatever. Yanni or Laurel. When, the, when I first saw this out there on Twitter, I'm like, this has to be a joke. I don't understand how anybody can hear anything but the other than one thing. <laughs> if you haven't been on Twitter or if you haven't been doing it, is here is the sound. And the question is, what do you hear? Do you hear the word Yanni, or do you hear the word Laurel? Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. See, now I hear I, I, I hear Laurel. Nothing but Laurel. Laurel. You guys are high. There is no way. That, that has is, nothing to do with what we're hearing. That's a separate okay? issue. Yeah. You guys must have separate. been fish slapped, because there is not an L in there. It's Yanni, Yanni, See, Yanni. Th- this goes against. Laurel, Laurel. Laurel. It's completely Laurel. It's completely Yanni. Which goes against what we thought might be going on, that everybody in the same room maybe hears the same thing. So, play it again. Laurel. 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 All right, so the three of us... I'm literally trying as hard as I can to hear Laurel. I don't hear it. So the three of us are in this room. You hear Yanni. I hear Laurel. Mike, you hear Laurel. I hear Laurel. Brett, what do you hear? I hear Laurel. You hear Laurel. Devin. Laurel. Cliff. I hear Laurel and Trey's lying. Yeah! 
I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Okay, let me go through everybody else first. Before we, we all get hear the... Laurel. Everybody's got everybody Laurel. Everybody hears Laurel. Yeah. You're the only one who hears Yanni. I, I don't know how you can hear anything but Yanni. Well, we all. I, I'm just Laurel. saying. Laurel. Laurel. We all hear Laurel. There's not an L in there. Well, I, it I, starts I mean, yeah. We it didn't, doesn't say he, love. He, here, we didn't hear it because there wasn't a wake and bake for the show for us. See, yeah. here's here's the Laurel. amazing Laurel. Laurel. thing about this is people, like we're doing here, and, and a lot of it joking around, people out there like getting mad at other people for thinking they don't hear and they think they're lying and stuff. I mean, well, I don't know what the reason is. I mean, it's the same reason we looked at the dress and, and some thought it was blue, some thought it was gold. I mean, I'm not sitting here getting mad because no. you hear Yanni. I don't care, but, but you're you. calling us all high because no, no, they're you're calling like, me I'm liars. Sitting, I'm sitting here and getting mad. I, I wrong. Mean, so, I, it's wrong. It's Team Laurel. There has it's to Yanny. be a reason. That's what I want to know. See, Superior I, intellect. I want to be- say... No. What's printed? No, this is the this is the. Oh, con- it, there's an article printed. It's science I printed for you. Oh, I'm not you reading that. Oh, okay. I don't want to read that. Why would I want to read that? I want the what? answers. What? It's what? in the article. What is Mike? this school? Mike. It's acoustics. Mike. It's a second spectrum stat. Yeah, this is a classic okay, contrarian but if play a, by Wingo. The acoustics in a room. Frequency. I have never been a contrarian in my life, nor will it's, I. No, ever you're be. starting now. Uh, the secret is frequency. The acoustic information that makes us hear Yanny is higher frequency than the acoustic information that makes us hear Laurel. <laughs> Some of the variations may be due to the audio system playing the sound, but but also the mechanics of your ears and what you're expecting to hear. Ah, okay. I heard higher frequency hearing is associated with lower intelligence, so this makes a lot of sense. Well, uh-huh. bring out that IQ test and we'll put that yes, to bed. Yes, we're going to do easily. that here. But it is amazing. Everybody, everybody. Okay, here we also Laurel called on you. We also called on Bharath Chandrakrasan, okay, a job. professor in the Department of Communications and Science at the University of Texas. He told us that half his lab hears Yanny and half his lab hears Laurel. But he also blames the files noise for the confusion. It's a little bit noisy, so that itself causes perception to be a little more ambiguous. Because it's noisy, your brain is filled with what it thinks it should be. Well, see, it, it has to be stuff that I know I don't understand, because the first two tweets I got sent to me were, people heard Yanny. Yeah. Okay? When I did it on my phone yesterday, sitting at home, I heard Laurel. When you did it, Mike, this morning on first and last, I heard Yanny. Now I hear Laurel coming out. So I don't know Laurel, what the hell's going on. Laurel, Laurel. Well, there, I know there's what's not going on. an it's L in there. There's a there's a there's an L right at the beginning and right at the end because Laurel spelled. Yeah, there's two actually L's. two L's. There's not one. Two L's. L's. There's, two L's. there's two L's, and they're yeah. the losers that you yeah. guys are for yeah. hearing Yanny. That's you know, hanging the. Here's what way, I don't understand. Yeah. Why do you get uh, yell at us? I'm not mad at you guys at all. No, no, I, I, think mad, you I am mad at Cliff. I would be mad at Cliff. He called you a liar. Yeah, Cliff for crying out loud. Yeah. If the guy calling me a liar is the guy who wanted to fire Brett Brown and, and get rid of Jay Wright of Villanova, I feel like I'm on pretty good ground. Yeah, true. Still Just sounds so like a know. decent idea the more you say it. One more time. <laughs> Cliff for crying out loud! Get out of here. All right, coming up, Brett has a theory. Oh, my God. Oh, Color me so shocked. Geez. Plus, do you want to play one of the best golf courses in America with us where we will say, Yanny? Details on how you can after this. Here's a little insider travel secret. There are tons of empty hotel rooms out there just waiting to be booked. That's why there's Hotel Tonight. Hotel Tonight partners with awesome hotels to help them fill their unsold rooms, which means you get incredible deals. And even though the name's Hotel Tonight, you can actually book up to a week in advance and up to 100 days in advance in top destinations. So download the Hotel Tonight app to start scoring better deals at better hotels now. I want me, you, and Golik to play golf one day. Yes. I just want me and Golik in my golf cart with the music blaring, drinking beers. I want to see how Wingo handles that. Mike. Done. Oh, I, listen, I play with the speaker on the cart, so we're good. <laughs> Hashtag bonding show meeting. We'll there get you the go. company to pay for it. Like that. Piece of cake. Trey, I am so proud of you. You're expecting the trip. It's a leadership conference for us. The guys are strong you. Thanks, guys. And it's happening. Sports Center brought to you by Post-It. If you work on a hot or rainy job site, you know how tough it can be to communicate clearly, but new Post-It Extreme Notes are water-resistant and extra sticky, so now you can get your message said and get the job done in any weather condition. New Post-It Extreme Notes, buy them today. All right, Golgan Wingo with you, ESPN Radio and ESPN2. Before we get into the greatest thing in the history of the world, Mm -hmm. um, Brett, researcher Brett, we will will be playing Brettomology in less than an hour has a theory about the ridiculous Yanny Laurel thing. Brett, proceed. 
So I, like Junior, have heard it both ways. Uh, I guess Senior as well. Yes, yeah. I have. I've heard it both ways. And so I tried to, when, I believe you said in the story that you can, that the part of the, the reason you're hearing it one way or another is what you're expecting to hear. Mm -hmm. And so I started just saying, I was hearing Laurel, and then I just started saying Yanny to myself. And then I played it on my phone, and I heard Yanny. And then while I was playing it, I started saying Laurel to myself, and I heard Laurel. Now, uh, listen, there might be a theory to that because when I the when I saw the tweet, the first word is Yanny, and then it says Yanny or Laurel. So maybe it's something. It, maybe that's something to it because uh, I've never heard anything but Yanny. See that, the, and, and multiple people have heard both. Yeah. That's the weird thing to me because yeah, I've bizarre. definitely heard both. Yeah, I mean, but maybe that because the first word I looked at was Yanny. So maybe in my head, that's what I'm thinking. I'm supposed to be hearing, but I swear to you, I don't hear an L in there at all. Well, we've all heard of the power of suggestion, yes. and nobody really knows what it is. Yeah. I think this is kind of a version of that. Yeah. Where you you can convince yourself of one thing, and then you can make it physically so. Why, why do I feel like, in a later version of Retymology, the power of suggestion will be coming up as one of the catchphrases Something that we're breaking I, but, down? But it is amazing, people. There's no way you can hear an L in that. I, yeah. I don't. I, listen, I don't know. Robin tweets, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, why would I lie about that? Yeah. I mean, am, am I getting some award for it? I nah. mean, am I just creating controversy? I hear Laurel. It, it, you would lie to it just to get the Stu of the Week award. Oh, that's, that's what exactly you would do. Right. And speaking of Stu Gatz. Go and Wingo Leadership Retreat. It is the greatest scam of all time, and Without we're pulling question. it off. Uh, we are going to be playing Pinehurst, and you have a chance to come play Pinehurst with us at our Golik and Wingo Offsite, all hands, town hall leadership, retreat strategy session, golf tournament. This is just fantastic. And it's so, it's going to be June 21st, 22nd, 23rd at Pinehurst Resort. Just beautiful, beautiful place. We're going to get to play Pinehurst number two, which yeah. is one of the great courses there is out there. And also the cradle, which is a nine hole short course. Fantastic. And par all along course. the way, a really par three good. course. We're going to have a ball there and you will have a chance to join us. Four of you. Plus two of your friends each. How about that? Four winners. And if you're one of the winners, you get to bring two friends. So that's your threesome. And then Trey will play with one of those. Yep. I will. Junior will. And Stu Gotts at this point will as well. So that will be an absolute ball. And you will be three days, two nights, treated to an incredible time at Pinehurst Resort in Pinehurst, North Carolina, round trip airfare for you and your two guests, premium accommodations at the resort, including hotels, meals, and you'll get a great swag bag, the whole deal. Here's what you need to do. Oh, I'm just sorry. Keep reading, but I'm just looking you go at ahead. the video you up go on ahead. ESPN right now. It's you, fantastic. You get ESPN to enter too. one time, oh, so one good. time between now and Friday, May 25th. You got one shot, and it has to be on, at our Twitter page, Golick and Wingo, at Golick and Wingo, so you need to follow us. Then you tweet to at Golick and Wingo, and make sure you use the hashtag golf with GW contest. Hashtag golf with GW contest. And your tweet can just be words. It can be text like. It can be a photo or it can be a video. Whatever you feel you need to tweet at Golik and Wingo with the hashtag golf with GW contest to be one of the four winners. One entry. So make it good. And we'll pick them after uh, Friday, May 25th. Once they're all in, yep. and we're getting some great ones right now. Keep them coming. Though. Again, it, listen, let, keep, your game needs to be raised because these have been great. Four winners, and you get to bring two friends. That's going to be the fun. Yep. Picking the two, especially. Well, it'd be if, fun you know, for us as you guys go through yeah, hell trying go to figure through. That it's exactly out. right. And we are going to have an absolute ball yeah, down there. I'm going to yep. need you guys to go ahead and talk about the trust falls. That'd be great. Well, Thanks. I'm going to figure <laughs> with office face to the max. Yeah. With the amount of beer that may go down, there may be some falling. Falling. So I don't, I don't there'll be trust involved. I trust I'm going to get the hell out of the way when you fall. <laughs> <laughs> I trust that you will fall down when we do this. And we'll come up with some sort of like mantra, synergistic. There'll be a mission statement. Platform. There'll be a mission you know, statement that we're going to regret like Tom Cruise did in, uh, you yeah. know, in, um, Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. And we're yeah. all saying, hey, great, man. Yeah. From the heart. Really, really, really great. Fantastic. Exactly right. Ours won't be from the heart at all. It'll no, be completely it phony. There you because go. Because we're just using it as a cover but to go play golf. We are going to have fun, and you guys can join us. Again, at Golik and Wingo, tweet us a photo, a video, or just a tweet. Hashtag a golf with GW contest, and you have a chance to go to Pinehurst. Yeah. Golf Pinehurst number two with don't, us. don't mess this up, guys. Don't. Seriously, don't mess this up. You don't know how, how many people we had to scam to pull wow. this thing off, so don't screw it up. Be strong. Coming up in the next hour of Golik and Wingo, 
controversy involving LeBron James mm. and how he was handled as opposed to how it might have been handled in another sport? I'm a one-trick pony, literally. I show up at kids' parties and act cute. That's pretty much it. So excuse me for being bitter when Geico says not only could we save you money on car insurance, but we do more, like give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or even via our award-winning mobile app. Well, ooh-la-la, aren't they (laughs) multi-talented? Hey, I said organic carrots. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Every deck is made for standing on, but there's only one that's always had a way of standing out. So if you're looking to bring more style, comfort, and creativity to your life outdoors, call on the brand that's known for making the most in outdoor living. From decking, railing, and lighting to furniture, fencing, and framing, at Trex, we're engineering what's next in outdoor living. To learn more about all of the outdoor solutions Trex has to offer, call 1-800-289-TREX or visit trex.com. That's T-R-E-X dot com. Glad you're with us. We got uh, game two of the Western Conference Finals coming up tonight. We had game two of the Eastern Conference Finals last night, and not a lot of pride shown by the Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll get into all of that after we get to what's trending. And we'll start quickly with the Celtics outscoring the Cavs 59 39 in the second half to take that 2 0 lead in the series. In the loss, LeBron James notched his third career 40 point triple double in the postseason to pass the big O, Oscar Robertson. For the most in NBA history, Mike. You know, you, you saw him come out exactly like we thought he would, just like in Game 2 against the Pacers when they lost Game 1. He scored 21 in the first quarter. It was ridiculous. They had a 7-point lead at halftime, which made you kind of a little bit questionable what, what may happen in the second half because they had a double-digit lead. It went to 7 uh, right at halftime. And then we talked so much in the third quarter. We've talked a lot about Golden State in the third quarter, but right. how important they are in, in all of sports coming out of a locker room out of a break, and it's a 14-point difference in the third quarter. Celtics were on fire. Rozier uh, was absolutely uh, on fire. The, the Celtics were in the second half, and Cleveland, LeBron was not the same. No doubt about it, because the shot he took in the jaw and the head area in the second quarter, and we will get to that. Uh, but he was not the same, so they really relied on others, and the others could not create enough space or enough shots and defensively, they're not known as a great defensive team, but there seemed to be a real lack of want to, want to. effort, whatever it was. Twenty uncontested shots for the Celtics in the second half. That that's incredible, and that that can't happen. Look, we we said someone else has to step up besides LeBron, and, and Kevin Love did. He had twenty two points, fifteen rebounds, fifteen yeah. rebounds. He played well, but again. He was 22 points, and he was minus 10 when he was on the floor. LeBron was 42. He was minus 9 when he was on the floor. Now, I'm not saying they're the reasons that they were that minus 9 or minus 10. I'm just saying when they were on the floor, yeah. as well as they were playing, they were still down 19 when they had, what, 64 of the 94 points right. for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, and again, both Ty Lu and our analyst Chauncey Billups said, hey, there just didn't seem to be a lot of, hey, let's let's try and do everything we can to keep this thing going. Uh, in that second half by the Cleveland Cavaliers. Meanwhile, before Game 2 of the Eastern Conference Finals, we had the draft lottery, and barring a trade, the Phoenix Suns will pick in the NBA draft for the first time in franchise history, and they become the fourth straight team to win the lottery after entering with the best odds, Mike. Yeah, and it was really kind of Sacramento who bucked the odds a little bit. They had a 5.3% chance of picking number two, and that's exactly where they ended up. Yeah. So they they really kind of bucked the system a little bit here. And you're looking at the top three players from DeAndre Ayton to uh, Luka Doncic from uh, Yugoslavia, Marvin Bagley Jr., the third. So is that going to be the order? We already have mock drafts out that say that's who will be one, two, three, sort of the Sun, Sacramento, and the Atlanta Hawks are number Did three. Did you say Yugoslavia? For, uh, is, is, Yugoslavia is no more. It, yeah, it doesn't exist. Yeah, anymore. actually, I'm Slovenian, so you think I would know that? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yugoslavia you, is no you more. Polish. No, not Polish. Well, I thought Slovenian. Slovenian. Again, Yugoslavia is no more. I do under. Yeah, there you go. That's my bad. Ah, uh, he. They're yeah. in my ear. I was. No, I, okay. I was just gonna let it go. Yeah, yeah. That's what our people do behind the other guys. Just find the mistakes well, that we make instead of it, worrying about the show. It's what Cliff does. Cliff, for crying out loud! That's what Cliff does. He's Cliff is the ultimate hater. What's interesting is a coach with the Suns, though. Uh, had coached Luca um, for a bit, so yeah. because there are thought, thoughts, could they go that route instead of Aiton from Arizona uh, and, and taking Doncic? I, I don't, you know, we'll have to wait and see. This is the first of many mock drafts, and obviously there's a, uh, you know, the the, the look feeling out period of of seeing these players. One uh, uh, Doncic is what six eight, 
But he's a point guard, six eight point six guard. eight point guard. The dude is unreal. When you yeah. want, and really all you have is a highlight reel on him because nobody sees him play at Real Madrid. You know, you're not Fact. Not, not a whole lot of, of watching there. I clicked on my Real Madrid channel, the but other he day, is. Yeah. They they talk about what a special player he is and and possibly can be at this level. Well, it's interesting because a lot of people are like, oh, we're we going to go Darko Milicic again, which didn't work. Yeah, out. Yeah, but then yeah. Chris Depp's Porzingis, Porzingis is, yeah, it's been exactly absolutely right. fantastic. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and then of course they could go the big guy out of Arizona as mm-hmm. well. So yeah, exactly right, John Eight, and that's what yeah. we, we talked about earlier. Yes. So we'll see what happens there. <laughs> Meanwhile, it has been a rough week for Mariners second baseman Robinson Cano, who was placed on the DL with a broken hand on Monday. But that's not the entire story. No, he did that before being suspended eighty games on Tuesday for violating the joint drug agreement between the players and Major League Baseball. So basically, what happened here is he tested earlier for a diuretic. Okay quote-unquote water pill. It's something that's supposed to flush your system out and used as can be used as a masking agent uh, for PEDs. So he tested positive for it, and he was appealing this. And the league basically showed him and his representatives, his team, uh, information that said, you know, we kind of yeah. got you we on this one here. We can prove this is what they do. Yeah. Uh, he still admits, I've never taken a PED. He said that, but whatever info they put in front of him, he has decided to drop his appeal and take the 80 game suspension, which will cost him about half a salary, which means it's going to cost him about 12 mil of his $24 million salary. But he really is trying to emphasize that he did not test positive for PEDs. It was a diuretic, uh, for the possibility of there's been no, obviously, guy voted into the Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, who has tested positive for, or really, I guess, been associated, been associated with, PED, PEDs. with PEDs. Yeah. So we'll see. He's got, what, five years left on his deal, 120 mil, and then and he's going to get every penny. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. People talk about, is it worth it? You know, yeah. if, if you do think he is guilty, because you started, see, did you see, uh, Justin Verlander? Yeah. His tweet, and here comes the excuse in yeah. three, two, two and one. one. Everybody has, you know, say, okay, they don't believe him, but then people will sit there and say, you know, is it worth it to do? Okay, you're giving up if you feel you have a Hall of Fame career, but that, that's a rarity of a Hall of Fame career considered to, to the thousands of people who are playing the game, right? Right. And if you can pull off a monster deal, if you're using and then get busted, you're, okay, I'll give up a little bit of money, but I'm going to get the rest of that money, you know, at some point, somehow, some way. So that's why people will take that risk. And again, just so people understand, while he was popped for a masking agent, the way it works in the agreement between the Players Association and Major League Baseball, Major League Baseball says, we did this, and now we're going to prove that you did this to mask a story. They they prove it, right. not a story, a performance enhancer. I right, want to be right, clear, right. story is a specific performance enhancer. So what they do is they go through the process and say, we found this, and now we have evidence to show you directly right. that you did this to cover up this, and that's when he dropped the appeal. By the way, the irony is that the Mariners are now moving D. Gordon to second base. Yeah. Gordon was previously suspended 80 games for PED. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, Six of one, half dozen of the other, basically. And you know what? All it, it, and done. It, is it going to be even a blip on the radar? No. Is this even going to be a blip on the radar? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not, right? Yeah. Well, look, in terms of, I think, how certain baseball writers will look at him, yes, and how certain peers will look at him, but at the end of the day, Robinson Cano is still going to get the, the bulk yeah. of that money, and I, and I think that he'll be remembered as a pretty damn good player. Yeah, right? he, he absolutely will. And, and just think of... Players that have used or suspected of using and where they are, whether you're still kind of looked as ostracized or, or not. You know, yeah. if people forgiven you or if you moved on and look at A-Rod. Yep. A-Rod's living his best life. Are you kidding me? Yep. You know he's what he's doing for us. us and Fox and other things. I mean, people are digging what he's doing right now. You know, you move on. May never be. A, I still think eventually you get into the Hall of Fame because yeah. I think there will be a rollover. But will it be of writers and voters? But will it be in, in time when these guys are, you know, like the Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds of the world if they're going to run out of time on yeah. the ballot? Yeah, it's interesting because at some point then you're just saying an entire era of baseball didn't exist. Right. You know, and at mm-hmm. some point you have to acknowledge these things went on but when they were winning on when they went on these were the best players of their era. right okay glad you're with us Golik and Wingo on ESPN radio and ESPN news presented by Progressive's home insurance with insurance for cars home boat motorcycles RV and commercial ve- and commercial vehicles at 1-800 progressive and progressive.com so there's a lot to get into about what happened in game two of the Eastern Conference Finals. We've talked about how great the Celtics have been, and they were terrific in that game. They were younger, faster, stronger, tougher. There's no question about that. We talked a little bit about the lack of desire in some of the stats, not second spectrum, Mike, that show that maybe the Cavs weren't living their best life or giving their best effort in that second half where they were down 59-39. to 39. 
But then there was something that happened to LeBron James right before the end of the first half. Right, a little over three minutes ago in the half. Yeah, he was uh, on the baseline and was trying to drive toward the basket uh, when I believe it was uh, Jason Tatum, Jason Tatum yep. came in. He came in and tried to hit the ball right. with, with both his hands reaching in for the ball. Caught him flush on the chin. R- with, with Tatum's shoulder caught LeBron flush on the chin and kind of turned his head, but definitely caught him flush on the chin. And, and what did we always say about a, a, a boxer? You want to get him square <laughs> right. on the chin yep. for a KO, right? And whenever a football player is hit right under the ch- the face mask and on the chin strap, a lot of times that leads to a concussion. Yep. Well, we're not doctors. We don't want to, we don't want to pretend nope. like we are. But what happened next is LeBron was down on the floor for a long time on one knee, and then he, I think, he missed, made one and missed uh, to one, made one of two free throws. Right, right. And then slowly walked into the locker room. Uh, and then in the second half, when he did come back in and play, no, no, he came he back in, in the first half. In the first half, yeah, in the first half, yeah. he was sitting over on the table and came yeah. in with about a minute or so to go, I think, uh, in the first half. But yes. in the but in most of the first half, before he got popped on the chin. He was being extremely aggressive. Oh, absolutely. He was being extremely aggressive and going to the rim. He was diagnosed as having a neck strain. Right. Is what it was. A neck strain. Um, so, uh, but he wasn't the same player in the second half. He, oh, he, he absolutely was playing wasn't. the same way. In and the and listen, half. an injury can make you play different. There's no doubt about it. And let's just go first with if it was a neck strain, would it make you be less. Aggressive, less Probably. physical. It, it, it very, very easily could. This is this is the fear we have is playing uh, doctor while watching. Correct. Yet we're all going to play doctor while watching. Yes. And this is what Ty Lue had to say about LeBron in <clears throat> relation to the injury, especially between the first half and the second half. Um, it was a tough collision. Um, knocked his head, you know, sideways, and um, of course he came back. But when he came back, I don't think he had that same punch that he had before he left. You know, as far as attacking the basket, um, playing with that force and power we talked about, a shoot around. So uh, we'll see how he feels. So again, could that be because of a strained neck or an injury? If a player gets injured and, and they have to play another half, could they not be as good or aggressive as they were because of said injury? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. But, we're, you know, you, you look a little bit deeper into this and you start looking for little things. When I hear strained neck, I, I don't recall... One time, him reaching up and kind of holding his neck, holding his neck, and kind of moving his head around like you know, my neck hurts. He looked like so he got dead. That he did. He he did. He looked like he caught the 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 shoulder and the jaw, as you mentioned, was down on the knee for a little bit. He just was kind of staring off a bit, and then after he made the second free throw, Boston brought the ball in and and they fouled him right away. Uh, they fouled the, the Boston player right away, so play would stop, and he to walk directly into the locker room. Said he needed to go in there and basically, you know, collect himself a bit. Yeah, J- just for technical purposes, he left the game in the second quarter with three forty-eight to go. <laughs> right, he re-entered the game with just under two minutes to go in the second quarter. So essentially, he missed less than two minutes of game action. So you know, in this day and age of head injuries, which is certainly brought up a lot in in football, no which question, no doubt about it. But but all sports are more cognizant of head injuries, especially at the youth level. We've seen other rule changes at the youth level uh, to deal with with head injuries. But here, I mean, let, let's let's just flat out be honest. Yeah. I mean, it, what what if this were Tom Brady? What if this were Tom he would Brady? He would have gone into the concussion protocol. I mean, there's no way he would have come back out on the field. Correct. I mean, we've seen in the league where players have get their head slammed to come back, and, and now the league is at a point where, okay, we're not screwing around with this anymore. Right. You look wobbly at all. You go down on a knee. You look dazed. You're going to go through the protocol, but most of the time, if you have that look, you're done for that game. Well, the two instances where they really messed it up for technical purposes uh, uh, last year in the NFL, the Thursday night game with Russell Wilson, where he got popped in the jaw. Right. Now, I don't think he had a concussion on that one, but I'm, I'm speculating here. But he went into the medical tent. By himself. And, by himself. And before they could even get the tent up completely, he ran back onto the field to play. Right, right. And then there was the Tom Savage issue last year for the Houston Texans, where it was doing, I can't remember what the name of the syndrome is, where your yeah, arms are shaking. Yeah, arm went straight out it's kind fencing, of deal. It's yeah, a fencing, fencing something, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so he, he never should have gone back into right, the game after right. that. That was the direct look of what a, what a concussion so, looks so like. So the rule now is basically yeah. if you have that look about you, that, that, you know, that, that, what whatever that it's called, you. you're basically, you're yeah. done for the game. Yeah, it's you're, a you're fencing not, response if, is what If it's you look wobbly at all, you're yeah. not going back in the game. Now, did LeBron wobble? No, he didn't wobble. But he stayed down on his knee for down, a long time. He, he went down on his knee, kind of like remember when Cam Newton went over to the sideline and went yes. down on, on one knee. Although the Panthers said in that playoff game against the Saints, it that was, was 
to catch his breath, yeah, and, so they and can get the backup ready, eye. and some stuff in his eye, right, right, which it right. might have been because he right. was he was right. looking at his eye. There's no question. But LeBron was specifically asked about the injury after the game, and this is what he said: "How do you feel after the collision with Jason Tatum in the first half, and um, do you think it affected your game in, in the second half at all after the collision?" Um, I felt like I needed to go back to the locker room, which I did, and. Um, you know, kind of recalibrate. You know, um, it was a tough, uh, tough blow. Um, obviously, incidental. You know, his shoulder hit me right square in my jaw. So, um, just wanted to go back to the back and make sure everything was fine. Um, you know, but I don't think it, it didn't affect my game after that. Well, I think you and I have the same question now. You just asked it, and I'm not sure. We know what the what the concussion protocol is <laughs> right. in the NFL. It's yeah. blatant, it's obvious, and mm-hmm. sometimes it's followed, and sometimes it isn't. Most of the time it is. We want to be clear about that. But we had, as we said, a couple of glaring examples of where it wasn't last year in the NFL. Do we know if there's a concussion protocol in place, Brett, in the NBA? Yeah, there is. And, they, and the first step is if they think the guy has a concussion, they bring him off the floor to a quiet, distraction-free environment to conduct a test. So well, maybe they did. Yeah. Well, 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 now the, nobody said that they conducted that. Now I don't know if they. He went to a locker room and That's he walked to the locker room. It's it's not like they led him to the locker room when they followed him. Uh, they followed the Boston player after he made that free throw till so they could stop play. He walked directly to the locker room and there was no word at all, unless maybe they all just said we're not going to go down this road. Right. But there was no word that there was a con- concussion test. Uh, in the locker room. And listen, I, I certainly won't put this all on the the medical team because what do players do? You know, he could have said, my neck hurts. Could have been his head. Players right. all try and hide it. We sit there and try and we say we need to protect players from themselves at times. So unless you have that look of, oh, my God, that was his head, a player may try and say it was something else and try and get away with it. Well, what do we always say about the NFL and what the NFL is trying to do? We want to take the player out of it. Oh, that's exactly right. We want to make sure that the coaches and players are out of it, that it's a completely medical decision. So we don't know. We don't know what the medical team saw when they saw the play. We don't know what was said in the locker room. They came back and said a neck strain. But we that's something we don't know. Yeah. But what we do know is it gets treated different in football. Right. You know, it, it just does. And is that right? Is that right? Is that fair? Should we should it be treated less in football? Well, because we're talking about a concussion on the field. We're not talking about. I understand the repetitive hits in practice, and they're right. trying to change the practice habits and stuff like that. We're talking about a concussion on the field during a game, and what the protocol is, and why is it seem like it's maybe different in football than in the other sports. Well, it's 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 different. Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, we always say people say football is a contact sport. No, football is a collision sport. Okay, ba- basketball is a contact sport. There is contact. Football is a collision sport. Basically, that's the entire premise of the game. One wall of men, the offensive line, lining up against another wall of men, the defensive line, who collide with each other, which allow everything else to happen. And then when someone has the ball, you have to collide with them to bring them down. So it is a collision sport. It's not a contact sport. It's obviously the most popular sport. For example... uh Recently, the Pro Bowl last year got a higher rating than Game 1 of the Eastern Conference right. Finals. And we all know the Pro Bowl, and we love having it. It's just not the same level of competition right. as a chance to get to the ultimate stage in another sport. So there is a higher level of popularity with football than there is with any other sport in America, and that's why our eyes are tuned there. And now with all the things coming out about CTE and the things that we're learning and trying to figure it out, the NFL wants to make sure they protect uh, their investment and they protect their players better as they go forward. So obviously we're much more in tune with right, it right. within football. But the question then becomes, as we see, look, LeBron is 6'8", 260 pounds. That's a big dude, okay? And we're seeing bigger and bigger guys play. I mean, Jordan at his, what was Jordan? 6'5", 6'6", right? 6'6". 6'6", 230, 240. And he was a big, he was a big guard at the time. LeBron is 30 pounds heavier. Yeah. And two inches taller. We're seeing the evolution of basketball where players are bigger, faster, and stronger all the way around. Does the NBA start needing to become more aware of possible things like this happening in its league? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to, I don't know if this one is over, if it already gets put to the side, or if the next strain is going to be the official thing that's taken, or there'll be more questions asked. I have no idea. Uh, but we're going to get these. Topher uh, tweets in. Bronze fourth quarter shrinkage had nothing to do with the injury. Stop it. This is LeBron when the heat turns up. Uh, and he's often not always disappears and is not aggressive. See, I think that's I mean, just that's ridiculous. ridiculous. Go, go, go check who's hitting 
big shots at the end of go, games. Want to go back and the number? Just, go just t- stop. Just go it. Back, That's just ridiculous. Go back to the Raptors series. Just I mean, go back to the Raptors series. On. How did he do in the fourth quarter of that series? I mean, get it, out of here with that. Just, just get out of here. Stupid. That, that that's you know what that is. <laughs> That's confirmation yeah, bias. Yeah, this really is does. what I think. Right. Then I saw something, and it confirms now, what I already thought. A- am I saying that everything that happened in the second half and, and him being less aggressive was because of Absolutely positive? not. No, I'm not saying that. But, I mean, that that's old and tired, though, for do better. Yeah. That is old, old, and tired. And we're not Bottom making, line is the Boston Celtics are a better team right now. Which I now. believe we've said exponentially about a thousand yeah, times yeah, already on this exactly show. That's exactly right. So you can hear what you want to hear. All we're saying is, and we said it the entire first hour, and we'll do it again later on this show, that the Celtics are the younger, mm-hmm. faster, stronger, better team. That does not in any way take away from what did or didn't happen with LeBron, right. and it's something that I think the NBA has to be a little more concerned about going forward. I'm, I'm sure, and, and they will be questioned. I'm sure that the staff, the medical staff from Cleveland will be, will be questioned. They'll go forward with this, and they'll look into it and see if everything was done properly and what they looked at when they went into the locker room, and, and we'll find out. Yeah. But I, I think we all know it just gets treated a little bit differently in one sport as opposed to some of the other sports. It is completely different and completely looked at differently in the NFL for a couple of reasons. One, because there are more eyeballs on it. Two, because it makes more money. Three, because it's more popular. The more more popular you are, the more eyes are on you, the more it becomes a topic of conversation. And it's the nature inherent of the sport in football and what they're trying to deal with in a collision sport, which is football, compared to a contact sport in basketball. So... If you're trying to figure out exactly how the Celtics are up 2-0 on the Eastern Conference Finals, without their two best players uh, that we thought would be the cornerstones of this team, we're going to ask someone much smarter than us. So smart, in fact, they were asked to give a commencement address this weekend. Wow. Hey, everyone. Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. At Trex, we know there's a place for wood in your backyard. We recommend the fire pit. But when it comes down to choosing the right material for your next deck, look no further than the superior beauty and durability of the world's number one premium decking brand. Trex delivers the look of wood without all of the work and the worry. And it's made from 95% recycled materials, which makes it the right choice for your backyard 100% of the time. To learn how to make Trex your next deck, visit trex.com to order samples. As we continue here on Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News, glad you're with us. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And I think that before the season started, Mike, before the season started, a lot of people thought, yeah, we, we could see the, the Celtics yeah. in the Eastern Conference Finals. And then they played game one mm-hmm. and lost Gordon Hayward right. when his ankle was going the wrong way. Yep. And then they played the rest of the season, and Kyrie Irving got worn down, and he's no longer available. I think at that point, a lot of people thought, Maybe they won't be. Boy, their future looks bright, but not right now. Not right yeah. now. Yet here they are, two games away from the NBA Finals. So for more on what the Celtics have done and how they've been able to do it, we're delighted to bring in Jackie McMullen from Around the Horn, former columnist for the Boston Globe, a best-selling author with the New York Times, and was the commencement speaker at Emmanuel College. Wow. That resume shames us, so I don't ever want to have to say that again. Uh, so Jackie joins <laughs> us now, uh, courtesy of the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Get the feeling of being rewarded with the gold status Shell with the Fuel Rewards program. Download the Fuel Rewards app, join, and start saving five cents a gallon today. Jackie, good morning. Thanks for being with us. If you could sum up exactly how the Celtics are doing what they're doing without some of their best players. It is kind of remarkable, isn't it? Uh, especially after Irving went down, because right. the one biggest flaw with this team is scoring. They really struggled to score at times, and you even saw that last night. They had long lulls where guys couldn't hit shots. They only shot 43% to still win this game. So it's very simple to me, anyway. They are designed to be a 3 and D team. The threes come and go. The defense simply does not. They just held the Cleveland Cavaliers to 37 points in the second half. But Braun James had six turnovers, which was one more than the entire Celtics team. So it really flows from their defensive rotations. It's interesting because they switch. Remember when we were all kids and we played? You never switched. You weren't supposed to, right? They've made an art of it because they have long athletic wings, and they get into your passing lanes, and they disrupt you, and they make you uncomfortable. 
And I think if you want to talk about why the Celtics are even here now, which is absurd, it's all about the defense. Because offensively, it can come and go at any time, which is why, by the way, this series is not over, contrary to what everybody else is saying. You know, you you look at and you this this team, and you're getting good play from a lot of players, all five in double figures last night, including one off the bench, so six total. In your mind, which player or two has surprised you the most, given the injuries they've had, and but what where this team still is? Well, I really I look at Terry Rozier, and and when when Kyrie went down, I thought, well, they just can't match that scoring uh, and and some of the intensity that they get out of the of the the backcourt. He's the one to me uh, that I just didn't know he could play at this level. Now, he still has stretches. He, he did not shoot the ball well last night, and we know that his numbers home versus the road are very different, and he struggles a little more on the road. But to be able to fill any part of that vacuum with, uh, with Kyrie out to me is the most important thing that's happened. And, you know, he had a stretch there where he didn't have any turnovers in the fourth quarter of any playoff game. So the two-way play that Terry Rozier has given to me, I expect it. You know, these young guys, everybody's like, wow, they're young, but these guys are going to be all-stars. I mean, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are stars now, and they're going to, you know, there's who knows where they're going to go. So to to say that they're surprising, no, not to me, because I've seen how talented they are. So Rozier's the one that I've seen that's taken that big step up. Jackie McMullen with us of Around the Horn, and of course a former columnist with the Boston Globe. You mentioned uh, those three young guys. Brown is 21, Tatum is 20, and Rozier is 24. We, we've talked so much this season about the process in Philadelphia right. and, and how the Sixers have these young stars they can build around. But in all likelihood, the core is deeper with the Boston Celtics, and they're just or maybe a few years older, but almost as young as the Sixers. So as, as we sort of try and plot the course going forward, uh, we, we see a Kyrie coming back, and we see Gordon Hayward joining the squad. For the next foreseeable future, do we look at the Celtics as a team to beat in the uh, Eastern Conference? Oh, absolutely. I think so, and, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with Philly and Boston both because I don't think either one of them are done shaping their team, which is probably a scary thought for everybody else in the East. But just like all these other teams, when you start to get good, the Celtics will have some choices to make. And, and by the way, it's immediate. What do they do with Marcus Smart, who you saw last night is the heart and soul of this team, the heartbeat of this team. He's the guy that immediately jumps up against J.R. Smith's face when he when he get, you know puts that cheap foul on Horford. And he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. You have a decision to make on him. And uh, I was asking around a little bit because I thought, well, if Marcus Smart could get, you know, 12 million from the Celtics, but he could get 14 million elsewhere. He would stay. And everybody has told me, well, no, man, he's going for the money as he should. You know, maybe Marcus Smart wants to be a starter somewhere. Think about this too. When Gordon Hayward comes back, your starting lineup is Tatum, Hayward, Irving, and those two young guys. So Terry Rozier now has to get, you know, adjust to coming off the bench. I don't think he minds. He'll play tons of minutes, but these are kind of the decisions they have going forward too. Every time you have a great, you know, you have the beginnings of a great team, you have tough personnel decisions to make, and that's true with Boston too. Talking with Jackie McMullen of Around the Horn here on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. You, you said something, and I'm, I'm going to ask you about it because I know they say a series doesn't start until the home team loses, and Boston wins there too at home. But you said you don't think you think the series is far from over. What have you seen that I would do. make you think? That this series is far from over. I, I'm from Cleveland. I'm a Cavalier fan, and I don't think the he's Cavs punting, can, Jackie. I, he's I don't punting. think the Cavs can come back in this one. Oh, you're struggling. I feel. I feel your pain. Well, it's it's not so much what's going on with Cleveland, but just having watched the Celtics team all year, they have periods where they cannot score. It's not because they don't execute properly. They move the ball and they take open shots and they don't go in. And they have had long stretches. And remember, you guys have all forgotten, I guess, that Milwaukee series, how bad they looked no, they in Milwaukee. Seven. Yeah, it went seven. You know, in game three, they, they get on the road like like a lot of young teams. and But they just have stretches where they cannot score. And this is where, obviously, Kyrie Irving and Gordon Haywood would solve so many problems for you. So I've seen them have those lapses. And it's not, it's not really a mental lapse. It's simply a matter of making or missing shots. Now, you saw it even in a microcosm of last night's game. Terry Rozier had a, had a very poor start. Al Horford didn't do a ton offensively until the end of the game when J.R. did the cheap shot. So these guys have stretches where they really, really can struggle to score. Now, if Cleveland can, and I just it's so hard to bet against LeBron James, uh, if LeBron James can get that team together and they can win a game in game three at home with the crowd behind them, 
you know, then it's a series again. And I just, it's not that I, I don't believe in what the Celtics have done and their culture, if you will, and all those buzzwords. I do. But there are times when they can look really, really bad because they struggle to score. But they'll always, as you said, keep in because they're going to make sure the other team doesn't score. It will. Jackie McMullen right. with us. Jackie, look, you've been doing this a long time. And, and I, I think we need to put in some sort of perspective what it's like to be a Boston sports fan these days because mm, it's pretty you know, good. Right. The, Cel- you know, the Celtics have, have are the kids the, yeah. and they just think they win all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Celtics are sort of the micro right now. The macro going back to 2001, you have eight Super Bowls for the Patriots, five championships. You have three Red right. Sox World Series. My God, you know, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And you've had success with the, with the, with the Bruins and obviously the Celtics have won a title there. They don't know that this is not the way it's been forever since this run, right? They do not understand. I tried to explain them what it was like when I was a kid to go to the, the Patriots games with my dad and, and sitting there in those metal, those miserable metal seats with people calling oh, them the Pats the and booing them and, and drinking and throwing stuff to the point where my father finally just said, you know, I don't think it's even safe to take you there anymore. And to going, you know, my dad's a New York City native. So ever since, you know, I can remember we bet a dollar on, you know, the, the Yankees and the Red Sox and, you know, I just, boy, I had no money left in my piggy bank for crying out loud. So these, you know, my kids who are in their 20s have no concept that this is, it's you know, it's championship city to them, obviously, particularly with the Patriots. But I thought it was interesting when the when the Patriots won, um, and then it was like, I think the the, the Bruins, they hadn't won it. And then all of a sudden in 2011, they're, they're skating around the right. Vancouver sheet of ice with the Stanley Cup. So just just amazing. And, you know, as a journalist, uh, it's pretty fun to be in a city that that keeps rolling out these compelling storylines. Pretty yeah. amazing. Look, just enjoy it because eventually yeah, it really the tide will turn. This is the golden age of Boston sports. There's no doubt about it. Hey, Jackie, we appreciate you getting up with us this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jackie. All right, guys. Have a great day. You got it. Jackie McMullen of how, how Around great, the Horn. How great it for kids growing up there. Remember, I grew up in Cleveland. Well, yeah. there wasn't a whole lot of this I, going I remember on. after one of the Patriots Super Bowls, there was a kid, kid with a sign. in my lifetime, all these championships. Yeah. You don't understand. It's, it's incredible. For, for, for generations of Boston sports fans, this was the absolute opposite of what the norm was, and now they are all in on everything. You know what we're all in on? What's that? Our favorite segment. Yes, we are. Researcher Brett, fact, fiction, Brettomology is back, or... I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I feel like a whole new person. Disclaimer, you will not become a whole new person. This is impossible. You might be able to join a gym or diet program, buy a new wardrobe, get hair implants, but your DNA and physical form will remain the same. Geico waives any and all liability if you attempt to become a new person, except a cyborg. If you choose to become a half-human, half-cybernetic organism with lasers for eyes, the Geico legal team would be cool with that, because, quote, laser eyes are pretty sweet. Pew, 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 end quote. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. It's the game show segment that's captivating a nation. The origin is Latin. It has been sort of corrupted over time. Like this show. Making everyone that hears it smarter. In the 1800s, English authors were likely to partake in opium den activities. Now, with your host, researcher Brett. Take a guess where that came from. Brett's got your answer. It's Brettomology. Here are the categories. Words and their meanings. That's straightforward. Sports Center brought to you by Dell. May is Small Business Month, and thank you. And Dell wants to say basically thank you to all the hard work uh, everybody's doing out there. And Dell is offering now up to 40% off select PCs with the 8th Gen Intel Core processors. What you need to do is call 877-BY-DELL to speak with a small business technology advisor today. That's 877-BY-DELL. All right, here it is. Gold can win. Go time for Bradomology, brought to you by Discover Card, who will match all the cash back new card members earn at the end of the first year. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Limitations apply. Again, researcher Brett, going to come up with a phrase. We decide what the meaning is. Uh, official standings, I'm 15 out of 24. Right. You're 12 out of 24. Junior is 4 for 8, and Jeff Saturday, the one time he played, was 1 for 4. Okay. Brett, are you ready? By the way, you look a little dressed up today. Uh yeah, you know, you got to when you when fame gets to you. Okay. You gotta, all you right. All rise right. Up to the occasion. Here we go. What's okay. the first one? Uh first one, the bee's knees. The bee's knees. The bee's Very knees. High quality. Is right. it from the wife of melatologist H E Hilton? She was an author named Carol Hilton. She wrote a children's story about his work in 1924 entitled The Bee's Knees, which was a reference to bees carrying pollen on their legs. Ironically, it was her story that colored most Americans' knowledge of bees for decades, and the phrases stood the test of time. 
Or, or, or did bees knees originally have no meaning at all? It was just a rhyme that people decided to say, and it didn't pick up any positive meaning until it was appropriated by flapper culture in the 1920s. I am absolutely positively going with number two. Yeah, look, that's the that's that's what I associated with the 1920s and the flappers. I'm also going number two. Deuce. Deuce. The flappers are correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right, off and running. Your second phrase, nose to the grindstone. Ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. okay. Yes. Uh-huh. In medieval grist mills, millers would grind flour between two grindstones. If the stones were too far apart, the flour wouldn't be ground finely enough, and if they were too close together, the flour would burn. Master millers would get their noses close enough to the grindstone to smell the flour as it was grinding so they would know if it was close to burning. Well, that's a great definition. That's a great... If you made that one up, kudos to you, sir. Or, 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 blacksmiths in the Middle Ages used a grindstone to sharpen blades, and when they were really focused, they would get very close to the grindstone. There is an implication that having your nose to the grindstone can wear you out, and that's because if your nose actually touches the stone, it'll really mess up your nose. Wow. Two quality definitions. One of those you made up. I'm going with one. One. I'm going with one. It sounds great. And just because I need to catch you, I'll differ and I'll go with two. The blacksmith's number two. Yes! Oh! Yes! Yes! Dang it. Yes! Zero knowledge. I just did it to try to catch up with you. All right, the what's the next one? Devil's Advocate. Ah. Oh, that's a, that's a De Niro movie. No, it's an Al Pacino movie. Al Pacino movie. Yeah. From the Latin, Diaboli... Advocatus. This was an unofficial position. Wait, say that again? A, <laughs> Diaboli Advocatus. This was an unofficial position appointed in the 1500s by Pope Sixtus V. When Sixtus S- V? Yes. Sure. When someone was nominated for beatification or canonization, the devil's advocate was tasked with stating the arguments against that candidate. Or. 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 or from the book The Shepherd of Hermas, an early Christian document published around 150 A.D., the two two angels overlooked the man in the story, one of righteousness and one of iniquity. Later adaptations of the story referred to those angels as the guardian angel and the devil's advocate, the first version of the angel and devil on your shoulder. All I can think of in that is the animal house Animal scene. house, yeah. without question. Uh, and just because I thought, I thought, what are you going? I'm going one. Oh, I'm going two. I'm going one. The Pope. Yeah! Who's the yeah! smart guy now? There you go. Two out of three. Let's go. Shoot. All right. We got we got about a We're minute and a half. One more. Here Your we final go. Final phrase. Slush fund. Slush ah. fund. Ooh. Or, in the British Navy, slush was another word for the leftover fat from the meat cooked on the ship. The sailors kept the fat in barrels, and they would sell it when they got to port, giving them extra money to spend, but not necessarily in a nefarious sense. Going to the ocean. Or, 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 slush and sludge were used interchangeably in the 1800s, and the phrase slush fund was first used to denote dirty money when the New York Times accused John Wanamaker of funneling money illegally to Benjamin Harrison's presidential campaign, which defeated the incumbent Grover Cleveland in 1888, despite Cleveland winning the popular vote. The sum in question was $400,000, the equivalent of $10 million today, and Wanamaker was then appointed the Postmaster General. I love the first definition. Yeah. Absolutely love it, but it's number two. Uh, I'm going number one just two. to be a well, contrarian. Two. Well, okay. Two. Yeah. two. It's the fat. Oh. Yeah! Three out of four, baby! I got smoked. smoked. Woohoo! There you go. Can we update those stats for me, please? That slush fund is fantastic. I love that one. But the fact that you went through that much detail to make that one up yeah. is what makes it great. All right, I'm 18 for 28. You're 14 for 28. Junior, we gave him the collar because he wasn't here. Uh, and Jeff Saturday remains one for four. By the way, Jeff Saturday, he should never play again. He'll just always be one for four. Coming up, we'll get a former NBA talent evaluator in here to tell us who really won the NBA lottery. We all know I won Bretomology.